Hi, my name is Derek Viger, and I'm a professor with George Brown College here in downtown Toronto, Canada. I lead the project management specialization here in the School of Business, and I wanted to take a few minutes to show you one of the neat tools that we use a lot in project management, and those are these things called weighted factor models, or WFMs. Now, I realize I might be a bit biased, but I think these models are pretty cool, because in essence, what they do is facilitate you making effective decisions. Um, they do this by helping you choose the option that best meets your goals. So my goal in putting this little video together is to walk you through how to actually do a weighted factor model. And by working through an example, hopefully you'll be able to apply this not only to a variety of project management situations, but when making decisions in business or even your personal life. So let me just get right to it, because I think the best way to actually understand weighted factor models and their application is to just use them. So I'm going to set a scenario for this walkthrough, and I'm going to pick a decision that most of you are probably working through right now, and if not, likely will be shortly, and that is the all-important decision of... What car should I buy? Now, what's interesting about the decision to buy a car is that it sometimes represents a significant milestone in a person's life. So maybe you already have an idea or have been dreaming about that perfect car. You can picture yourself behind the wheel, you know, with the windows down, the music going. You're the envy of all your friends. Uh, or maybe you dream about something more rugged and sporty, you know, something where you can see yourself driving to the cottage or the ski hills in style. Or maybe you dream about something fun, something that allows you to toot around the city and not pay crazy gas, parking, or insurance fees. How do you decide when presented with all this choice? Well, that's where weighted factor models can come in. And the first thing you want to do, and this is before searching online or visiting any car dealers, is sit down and ask yourself, what are my criteria? What are those criteria, those goals, those objectives that I am hoping to meet when making this decision? Now, this is sometimes easier said than done. However, the important thing is, is to map it out and be as specific as possible. Now, these criteria are going to be different for everyone, but for the purpose of this example, let's ask ourselves, what are some of the criteria or goals that we hope to satisfy when looking at these options for cars? Okay, for one thing, we're students, we're probably going to be conscious of price. We'll have a target budget that ideally we would like to come under. So for this example, let's say we don't want to spend more than $25,000 for the sticker price. And this gives us a clear criteria that we're going to be able to utilize when we go around and evaluate different cars. Now, if I asked you what else you would find important, you might say things like you want to have good gas mileage or a car that's reliable. But if I was to push back, and ask you why those things are so important, we'd probably, boil, we'd probably boil it down to ongoing costs. Okay, we want gas mileage, so we're not paying a lot at the pumps. We want a reliable car, so that we're not always paying for maintenance. So really what we're saying here is that we want a car that's gonna be affordable on a monthly basis. And if we're gonna be specific about it, we might actually set a target. So looking at my student budget, I don't wanna pay more than $700 a month for gas, maintenance, and insurance. Safety may also be a priority. What's interesting here is that things like crash test scores and five-star safety ratings, they've been developed just for this reason, to help us specifically compare the safety provided by different cars. So, considering that we probably place a high value on staying alive, let's say, to be specific, we want a car with the highest safety rating, so five stars. We want front and side airbags, a proven ability to drive in all weather condition conditions. So it's going to be safe in snow, it's going to be safe in rain, hail, whatever else can Canadian weather throws at us. So looking at our list, uh, what are we missing? Well, all of our criteria are very logical, but let's be honest, sometimes we have an emotional connection to a car. It just looks cool. So we have to include style because who's kidding who? A lot of our decision may be based on color, design, and the overall look. Now, this one is really tricky to get specific for because style is different for everyone. And what you think is stylish, I might think is cheesy and vice versa. But for the purpose of this example, let's generally agree that we're looking for something that's sporty with a bit of a cool factor, positive web reviews, buzz, etc. Now, we could have looked at many other criteria. However, it's important that we really just focus in on our top priorities. Otherwise, the results are going to get watered down. So looking at my list, I'm happy that I have my criteria and I can proceed to the next step. And that is asking ourselves how important are each of these criteria. Chances are we don't value all of these criteria equally. Maybe you put more emphasis on the car looking good and you're willing to stretch your budget to get something that's really cool. 
Or maybe you just want something that gets you from point A to point B, so you don't see the point of going into debt for an asset that depreciates as soon as you drive it off the lot. Everyone will be different, but we need to get to a point where we understand the value we put on each of our criteria. And this is where the weight in weighted factor model comes in. So if I have a pie, what criteria gets the biggest piece? Looking at my four criteria, I ask myself the tough question, what is my top priority? So again, this is different for everyone, but for the purpose of this example, I'm gonna say ongoing costs is my top priority. I need a car that my part-time job will allow me to affordably carry each month. And how important is this criteria to me? Well, I'm gonna assign 40 points to it, which effectively means that 40% of my decision is based on ongoing costs. In terms of second priority, I'm going to put it on style. Let's be honest, if I'm spending this much money, I want something that I like. So I'm going to assign that criteria a value of 30 points. Third priority will be sticker price. It's still very important because of my budget, but I got some money saved away, so I'm going to assign it 25 points. Which means my final priority is safety. It's still important. I'm giving it five points and working it into my decision. But what I've determined is that the crash test rating won't influence my decision as much as the price or the style will. So one, we know our criteria. Two, we know the value or weight we put on each of those criteria. So now we're ready for the fun stuff. Let's go look at some cars. Through research, talking to people, visiting showrooms, test driving, we're now going to score each of these choices based on how they satisfy our criteria. So for the purpose of this example, I'm not going to use an overly scientific scale here. If something meets the criteria, I'm going to give it two points. If something kind of meets the criteria or is close, I'm going to give it one point. And if something doesn't really meet the criteria at all, then I'm going to give it zero points. So let's see how we do against the price criteria. Will I be able to purchase this sexy new BMW for under $25,000? Well, even if you're a good negotiator, the answer is probably not. So we're going to give that a zero. Can we get a new Honda Civic for a sticker price of 25000 Yeah, they typically go for around that. So we're going to give it a two. A moped for under 25000 For sure. We could probably get five of them, one color for each day of the week based on our budget. So let's give that a two as well. And as for a minivan, they actually can be quite expensive. Uh, we might be able to find something around that price. So we're going to give it a one because it's close. Okay, all right, uh, let's now look at our most important criteria, which is ongoing costs of under $700 a month. Well, we're probably going to hit that in speeding tickets alone with the BMW. So factoring in that we'll be paying crazy insurance on top of that, we're definitely going to give this a zero. Uh, the Civic Nation definitely hypes up how this is a very affordable car to maintain, so we're going to give the Civic a two. Again, the moped, we got no parking, no insurance, great gas mileage, so that's going to get a two as well. Uh, minivans are, they sometimes can be gas guzzlers. So again, we might be able to get close to that $700 mark, but I'd wager it might be a bit over. So we're going to give it another one. Safety. Well, considering the temptation to drive our BMW super fast with that kind of power under the hood and the fact we don't have a roof protecting us if we should roll over, uh, we're going to score that a zero. The Civic does have a good safety rating, but it's a smaller car, so we're going to give that a one. Uh, with our beloved moped, um, we're going to be likely zipping in and out of traffic, and as soon as we hit, of the, hit one of those uh, notorious Toronto streetcar tracks, uh, we're likely going to go over our handlebars, so we're going to give that a zero. And the minivan, well, those things are typically built like tanks, so I feel pretty safe inside one of them, so I'm going to give those a score of two. Now, the all-important style question, our BMW convertible. Are you kidding me? With the amount of heads we're going to be turning driving this thing around, we definitely have to give it a two. Uh, the Civic is sporty, but admittedly it doesn't have the same punch, so we're going to give it a one. The moped, well, you either love them or you hate them. I personally like them, but I recognize that some people don't, so I'm going to give this a one. Uh, the minivan, in terms of style, uh, well, you know, even if we put spinners on the wheels or hydraulics and neon lights underneath, it's probably not going to cut it, so we're going to give this minivan a zero. And that concludes step three, okay? So we've gone through and we've scored all of the cars against our criteria. So now we're going to bring this all together and we are going to multiply the scores by the weights. This effectively is going to work the importance that we place on each criteria into the actual scores. Why do we do this? Well, if we assigned a score of two for a car to our top priority, which is ongoing costs, that should be worth more in our decision than if a car scored, say, a two for safety. So let's see how this plays out. For price, we're going to take our 25 weighting and we're going to multiply that by each of the scores. So for the BMW, the 25 weighting times a score of zero equals zero. The BMW gets no point for price. 
For the Civic and the Moped, the 25 weighting times a score of 2 equals 50 points for each. And for our minivan, a 25 weighting times a score of 1 gives it 25 points on this specific criteria. And we continue to do this for all of our criteria, multiplying the weights by the scores. So for ongoing costs, we're going to multiply 40 by each of the, score, of the scores. For safety, we're going to multiply 5 by all of the scores. And for style, we're going to multiply 30 by each of the scores. What this allows us to now do is add up the points for each of our options and effectively calculate a total value for each car. So for the BMW, Okay, we got 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 60 equals 60 points. For the Civic, we score 50 plus 80 plus 5 plus 30, which equals a total of 165 points. Our moped gets 50 plus 80 plus 0 plus 30 for a total of 160 points. And last but not least, the minivan gets 25 plus 40 plus 10 plus 0 for a value of 75 points. So, after working through this weighted factor model, it's suggesting to us that the Civic best meets the criteria as we've laid them out. Now, I'm not saying everyone should run out and buy a Civic today, okay? This is according to the criteria that we have laid out. If we changed our criteria or changed our weightings, we might get a different result. But based on what we felt was important to us, the Civic is the option that seems to best meet our goals. So let's recap. We made this decision in four simple steps, okay? So first, we decided that the criteria, um, what criteria are important to us for our decision? What are those goals, those needs, those requirements that we hope to meet through the project? Next, we weighted our criteria. So we looked at our criteria to determine priorities and we assigned a bigger point value to those that we felt were more important criteria to consider through our decision making. We then looked at each of our projects or options and scored each of them based on their ability to meet these criteria. And we set up a very simple scale to help us do this. And then finally, we multiplied the weights by the scores so that effectively we could add up a weighted score for each of the options and identify the choice that best meets our criteria. So very straightforward stuff. And what's cool about this is that this model has a number of applications. So for instance, in project management, if we have decisions that need to be made about whether or not we should pursue a project, we can evaluate various projects against both profitability factors as well as qualitative considerations using this model. As you'll see in the next module, these weighted factor models also can help define the scope of the project. So, how do you make the decision whether something should or should not be included in your project? Well, with clear project goals or requirements, you can look at various ideas or solutions that you may be considering for your project and actually score them against the project goals to ultimately highlight a list of priorities that you should include as your scope. In terms of implementing a strategy, organizations can list out their goals and objectives and then look at all the various operational and project options in front of them to help create a roadmap of what projects to pursue in order to realize their strategic vision. And, when, and with personal decisions, okay, we just looked at buying a new car today, but there's no reason you couldn't use this model to evaluate various, say, job or volunteer opportunities against your career goals, or even daydream about what you hope to get out of your next vacation, okay, and then evaluate various locations and trips to see which option is going to best achieve your goals. We make tons of decisions every day, so the application of this tool really are endless. I hope you enjoyed this little walkthrough on weighted factor models and found it helpful. Feel free to contact me at the George Brown School of Business Arts and Design should you have any feedback or would like to further discuss. My email is dviger at georgebrown.ca and my phone number is 416-415-5000 extension 3391. Take care, have fun, and we'll talk to you again soon.